Um, and, and now in the PSI, what I, do, I don't think you take full responsibility because you kind of put the blame, I noted this from there, that you put the blame of the start of this on some unnamed woman who told you to do it when you were going to get some lumps checked on your neck. I first want to sincerely apologize from the bottom of my heart for my past actions, for the hurt that I have caused others, and for you, your honor, and all people to know that I am 100% accountable. This is former TikTok Lisa Ticklemeyer. Lisa was in court in July on theft charges for faking cancer to gain a following on TikTok. Lisa lied and manipulated thousands on the app. There were GoFundMe accounts created, people preparing meals for her and her family, and even people who shaved their heads just to be supportive of someone who wasn't even sick. Lisa never had a diagnosis, never even had a scare. I lost my sister to cancer in June 2017. This video is for her. Seeing what cancer did to my sister, knowing that Lisa felt it was not only okay to fake it, but okay enough to use it as a way to make people feel bad for her, just makes me even more angry. I know my sister would have plenty to say about it. The fact that Lisa tried to blame it on mental illness makes it that much more disgusting, in my opinion. She just can't be honest. What kind of mental illness makes you fake illnesses? Munchausen by proxy, maybe? From where I'm from, it's better known as an attention whore. Uh, sentence and leave that to discretion of the court. Uh, with that in mind, just a couple of notes that the state would like to put on the record. Uh, state's understanding there's a number of community uh, representatives here or victims that are interested in the outcome of this that are present in the gallery. Obviously, the court has received a number of correspondence from uh, the folks that you already mentioned. With respect to the restitution, there's an agreement with respect to the amount of restitution. However, through the course of the investigation, a number of anonymous cash donations and a number of anonymous donations were made. So by way of restitution, the state would ask the court would consider the following, that any known entity uh, that was deprived during this theft, they be made whole. Whatever amount is left over with respect to the anonymous amount, uh, Mrs. Bates would ask the court to consider uh, the order that the remainder be split between two charities, one being Cherished Friends of Ahava, which is a 501c3 that treats cancer patients, as well as the Victory Center, both located here in Toledo, Lucas County, Ohio. So that would be the state's request with respect to the additional funds that are collected uh, via restitution. Aside from that, Judge, this is an F4, uh, obviously, the court knows what is available to it, and we trust your sentencing with respect to whatever it is you decide to do today. Thank you. Mr. McElroy, do you have any problem with, with those uh, recommendations from the state of Ohio? Not at all, Your Honor. In fact, uh, such a restitution order was anticipated. I think even Ms. Tickmeyer mentioned it in the yeah. her interview with the pre -sentence. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Lizell, anything else? No, Judge. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, as this court knows, uh, based on the underlying conviction, there's a guidance for community control, and such a sentence is sufficient to fulfill the principles and purposes of sentencing. If we look through the statute, the first purpose of sentencing is to protect the public from future crime by this offender. Um, I suspect from reading the pre-sentence report and perhaps some of the letters that have been provided by medical providers, the court understands that the public need, it doesn't need protection from Lisa Tickmeyer going forward. It's also evident from her behavior while she's been under this court supervision, uh, while this case is pending. She has no violations, and the court had mentioned previously, <coughs> excuse me, when uh, sentencing another individual that was standing here that had taken it upon himself to take classes and um, counseling over at the Lucas County Jail. Ms. Tickmeyer has gone above and beyond that. You know, I believe it was in November of last year, she realized, <coughs> well, yes, I'd say it's safe to say she realized what was likely the impetus uh, for this underlying offense and <coughs> immediately checked herself in to get uh, mental health treatment. And she has continued that mental health treatment on a weekly basis since that time. That I believe the court should have a letter from one of those medical care providers that suggests any interruption in that treatment would set her significantly back in uh, bettering herself. The court can also look to her criminal history, 
I, I won't belabor the point. It's pretty straightforward. She has nothing but traffic violations until this offense. All of that suggests that the public does not need such protection from Lisa Tickmeyer. Another purpose of sentencing, as this court is well aware, is to punish the offender. Uh, there's no doubt that Ms. Tickmeyer deserves some punishment, and that's one of the things this court has to address today. Uh, I would point out, Your Honor, that there has been, fair or unfair, there has been unspeakable ridicule and shame, both self-ridicule and self-shame by the defendant herself, but more than that, public ridicule and public shame, as the court can well imagine, uh, in the era of social media, she was bombarded with messages saying some pretty terrible things that certainly this court would understand go far beyond any punishment that might be suitable. And that public ridicule and shame transcends just Ms. Tickemeyer. Her family has also been affected by it, uh, including her children. Lastly, Your Honor, the, the third purpose of sentencing is to provide effective rehabilitation. I won't belabor the point again, because I've already mentioned it, and I know the court has letters about it, but Ms. Tickemeyer has engaged in that very treatment that the statute imagines in trying to rehabilitate herself without the court order. She has sought out not just, not just one single type of therapy, but several types of therapy and counseling to help with her mental health issues. And I think the court should take that into account in fashioning a sentence today. Um, <clears throat> I think it's unquestionable that Lisa accepts full responsibility for what has happened here. Um, she has done so by entering a guilty plea. She has done so by her statements to precincts. She will do so. Uh, she has a letter written that she would like to read to the court. Lastly, Your Honor, I would remind the court, as I'm sure everyone does, that the statute requires the court to impose the minimum sanctions to achieve these purposes. I submit that a community control sanction is sufficient to achieve these purposes, particularly in light of what she has done since November to address her mental health issues that no doubt led to this offense. <clears throat> Given that, Your Honor, if, if the court finds community control sanctions sufficient, and that those meet the minimum sanction requirement of the statute, and the court does impose any period of custody time, I would ask the court to consider work release so that Ms. Tickmeyer can start making good on the restitution order, as well as, and I don't know if work release permits this, but it's clear that she needs to continue her mental health treatment. Um, it, it would be my, my first suggestion to the court that any custody time is gonna interrupt that mental health treatment. But if there is custody time that can permit that mental health treatment to continue and the court deems custody time necessary, then I would ask the court to consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Tickmeyer, anything you'd like to say? Yes, I have a letter I would like to read. I first want to sincerely apologize from the bottom of my heart for my past actions, for the hurt that I have caused others, and for you, Your Honor, and all people to know that I am 100% accountable. The remorse I carry with me every day is so much, but if I could go back in time, I would. On November 10th, 2023, I admitted myself to St. Charles, and it's a day that saved my life. I know I'm unable to change the past, and I will only strive to be a better person for myself, my husband, my two amazing sons, for my family, and friends. I will continue my mental health treatments twice a week, sometimes even more. I will work on mending broken relationships that I am responsible for. The support and love I have received from my husband, my parents, family, and friends is something I will forever be grateful for. I will never allow myself to go backwards and will only push forward to be who I am meant to be. Again, Your Honor, I want to say how truly, deeply sorry I am to everyone affected by my actions. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, there's been more letters in this case, I or think, that any I've ever had, considering, and especially the year I've had, some very horrific homicides. Um, you committed a fraud against so many people. Um, some people may get money back, um, you know, but just reading all these letters, meals made, um, gifts given in, in empathy of your diagnosis, your not diagnosis, um, the in-kind contributions, um, I appreciate that you said you're a loving mother, but even as the court read those words in the PSI and read the, you know, from some of your family members, I, you know, 
been doing this a long time. I've been in the criminal law system and I've prosecuted child abuse cases and I was in the juvenile court, but man, the circumstances of this offense, um, and I know there's mental health issues, but show, don't show the perfect loving mother because how are your children ever gonna have a normal life again? You know, this ridicule and this, this gossip, you, this is all you, this is all you, you did this, okay? This is gonna follow, if your kids wanna stay, and I'm sure they do because they're old enough that they don't wanna go uproot themselves to somewhere else, they gotta live with this always being out there, always knowing people are gossiping about their mom. That is not a, that is not a loving and caring mother because they are gonna be paying for your actions. I mean, even the things I saw about, you know, some of the couple of family members shaving their head in, in, in to, to bond and to, like, in solidarity with you. Um, the court also, um, you know, learned that, that I didn't know about, because I didn't know everything about this case. It was a plea. There was a fundraiser for a fallen officer um, that your son had done, and that a thousand of that went into this restitution part. The extent you went to lie about this, actually having your husband take you to these places, and now the court's supposed to understand that because um, you had this incident 20 years ago and never got therapy, this is all the result of that. Many who were really close to you and your family think you have no remorse. It's what I got in a lot of letters. I mean, the court always finds this somewhere in between. I mean, you can sit here, I mean, like you know what you're facing right now, but I mean, and, and I, I don't know if it's a result of what happened to you 20 years ago. There's clearly some, this is Munchausen. Like I had a Munchausen by proxy case when I did child abuse cases, a mother that was making her child sick. But that this reads Munchausen to me, um, that you wanted this attention. You saw that money that was getting gathered. Um, but re what really bothers me um, is there was a statement, we are going to pay restitution. You're not working, so I'm assuming that that's gonna be your husband right now if you pay it today. Um, and, and now in the PSI, what I, do, I don't think you take full responsibility because you kind of put the blame, I noted this from there, that you put the blame of the start of this on some unnamed woman who told you to do it when you were going to get some lumps checked on your neck. So the court's not sure that total remorse here, that sounds like you're blaming someone else of why this all started. You have no prior record. The court is bound by a presumption of community control, um, but that doesn't mean there should be no punishment. Yeah. I appreciate you've been working Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. I thought you were getting ready to impose sentence. There are a few things that just need to be clarified. Yes. Just one thing, Judge. That for clarity, the $1,060 that's mentioned in the yes, PSI sorry. with respect to the officer stalker, that is a separate matter that is not part of okay. this particular Thank case, you. just for the record. All right. uh, that's a different investigation. So I just want to. I appreciate that. that. Um, I do appreciate that you've been working on your mental health. Um, but you notice that the other person that was working on his mental health was in custody and received six months at CTF. Um, again, public ridicule and shame, well, that's, gonna, that's coming hand in hand for what you've done. Um, the, the money isn't making up for anything. I mean, these people's trust, so many people's trust, um, you just threw it out the window. I can't imagine if I'm one of these people that gave to you that I'd ever want to give uh, to a charity or anything like that again, um, which is too bad, but I wouldn't blame them. And you can't use your mental health as a shield to this. I, that's just not. Um, you have to take responsibility for what you did. And punishment certainly is appropriate. And that punishment is not that you were, that's part of it. Sensing hearing having been held pursuant to revised code 29-29-19, Defendant afforded all rights pursuant to criminal rule 32. The court is considering the record, oral statements, any victim impact statements, and the PSI prepared as well as the principles and purposes of sentence under 29-29-11. The court has balanced the seriousness and recidivism factors under 29-29-12. You're advised that you do have the right to appeal the plea. Such appeal must be filed in 30 days of sentence. You know, we talked about it as a limited right as just if I mess up today or mess up the plea. If you don't have funds for the appeal or uh, counsel that would be provided to you without cost. Court finds you under a plea of guilty on June 13th of 2024. You were found guilty by this court of count one theft, violation of 2913.02A3 and B1 and B2, a felony of the fourth degree. Pursuant to 2929.13D, the 
court does find a non-prison sanction does not demean the seriousness of the offense. Non-prison sanction will adequately punish the defendant and protect the public. Factors decreasing seriousness outweigh those increasing seriousness and there's less likelihood of recidivism. I don't know, I'm not positive that a non-prison sanction doesn't demean the seriousness of the offense. The court is overwhelmed that this is just one of those cases that you just don't want to hear about. Or will impose three years of community control to be monitored by the Lucas County Adult Probation Department. During that time, you're to abide by all the laws of this state and this nation. You may not leave the state of Ohio without permission of the court or your supervising probation officer. Under federal law, as a result of this felony conviction, you shall never be able to use, receive, purchase, own, transport, or otherwise possess a firearm and ammunition. Any violation is punishable as a felony offense. You're ordered to submit to DNA testing pursuant to 290107. Uh, mental health help, again, I'm not going to allow that to be a shield, that this there can't be a disruption. There's mental health help everywhere. You're going to spend the first six months of this sentence in the Correction Center of Northwest Ohio. Plenty of mental health treatment. I believe Unison's right out there in those things. You are to do 200 hours of community service. That is a drop in the bucket, I believe, as to what you put your community through. You're to continue your mental health treatment. You're to pay the costs and fees associated with this case. You're to seek and maintain gainful employment. You're to pay restitution as uh, $25,158.54. Um, and the court will note um, that if all known entities uh, be, were paid and made whole, uh, that the two, uh, the remaining funds that are collected uh, be distributed evenly between cherished friends of Ahaba and the Victory Center. Did I say that right, Mr. Loisel? Yes, sir. All right. Defendant notified a violation of a community control violation of the law or leaving the state without permission can lead to more restrictive sentence. I'm holding a sentence over your head of 17 months. You're notified that if you commit a new felony while in this community control, you will receive this sentence consecutive to any new felony or could, sorry. I'm gonna let you know too, if I ever have to, um, I ever have to impose that sentence, you're looking at up to two years discretionary post-release control. If you violate the terms of that post-release control, you can be sent back to prison for up to nine months for each violation for up to 50% of the stated term. A violation is a, new, if a violation is a new felony. You can be returned to prison for the remaining period of control or 12 months, whichever is greater, plus receive a prison term for the new crime. Court has considered defendant's present future ability to pay, considering all relevant factors pursuant to 2941.51D. I do find defendant has or may be expected to have the means to pay all or part of the costs of supervision, confinement, assigned counsel, and prosecution authorized by law. This is pursuant to 2947.23, 2929.18, 2951.021, and 9.92C. This order, um, or sorry, and the order for restitution in the amount of $25,158.54. A defendant is remanded to Lucas County Sheriff's Department for Transportation to the Correction Center of Northwest Ohio. Anything else, Mr. Wiesel? Nothing for you to say. Thank you, Judge. Your Honor, just two things. I would request that some portion of that six months be spent at work release. The second is it would be a mistake of my request that the sentence be stayed until tomorrow. She can report to CCNO. I hate stays. You knew you were coming in here. I will give you tomorrow at noon. You turn yourself in um, to the third floor um, to be transported to the Correction Center in Northwest Ohio. If you don't show up, you're going to prison. I'm just going to tell you that right now. And I'm not making any commitment as to work release. You can file a motion. Let me know she's still continuing what she needs to do at CCMO, and I'll make that decision. Judge, can we approach this for a moment? Sure. Thank you.
All right, two things. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's just some things that I have to think about, and, and I know there's some mental health issues, and I know um, I, we talked about up here, this is not a big sentence in my courtroom by any means, but this is a large sentence for you. Your Honor, um, Ms. Tickmeyer said that she's a... No, no, I, that's she's not bothering me at all. Okay, that's fine, good. that's fine. Very good, thank you. Um, but here's the thing. Um, I, I am going to allow you, but you're going to turn yourself in here, third floor security, by noon tomorrow. I meant it when I said um, that you're going to get that prison sentence if you do not show up. Um, I actually think this is a felony of the fourth degree that I certainly could overcome the presumption because of what I read in these letters. Not going to do that, however, but you know, you're going to obviously disappoint a lot of people um, and your family included, right? So turn yourself in by noon tomorrow. I don't want to have you here and have a, I, I mean, a warrant would be issued immediately and I, I mean, don't be late at all. By noon tomorrow, third floor security. Anything else, Mr. Lazell? No, Your Honor. No, Thank you. Good luck. know how that's possible. Awesome. 